Hello everyone and welcome at Going Green, a series of six dialogues organized by Vereniging Delta Metropole in cooperation with the province of Flevoland and the Floriade 2022. My name is Sophie Stravens and I will be your host for the next 90, 19 minutes, one and a half hours, during this sec second dialogue within this series. Um, we're still at this amazing location, the Food Forum Pavilion, and last time it was still wrapped up in plastic. Uh, and now we have this amazing view. Maybe next time we will show you a small video what it looks like. It's amazing and this side of the Floriade is changing every day. Um, and uh, um, this is the hotspot for exchanging knowledge about food innovation and the transition to a green economy, all in line with uh, um, well, the aim of the Floriade. Um, and the aim of this series of six dialogues is to research the concept of uh, green cities and how to work towards that. Um, and every uh, dialogue we will have a different theme uh, we will talk about. And today we will talk about making green work, connecting European cities for, and region, re regions for a strategi strategic approach to green. Um, the benefits for green urban spaces are widely uh, um, accepted. It is beneficial to our health. It creates uh, possibilities for recreation, contributes to mit mitigation, of course, of climate change, and it adds uh, on to opportunities for businesses. Um, however, the capacity to deal with these uh, strategic choice choices and this extensive urban green uh, well, varies across different European cities uh, of different sizes, of course. Therefore, knowledge, knowledge ex exchange between these cities and different sectors is really mandatory to work towards those green cities. What is needed for this to, ach to achieve a city development strategy that focuses on green and how can cities really learn from each other? That is what we will discuss this afternoon the coming one and a half hours with two new amazing guests. Here with me at the table, um, Victor Munoz Sanz, uh, Assistant Professor of Urban Design, TU Delft, Delft University of Technology, and Paola Huiding, a Senior Urban Planner uh, of the Municipality of Almere. Welcome, nice to have you. Um, we will start with two short presentations of you. 10 to 15 minutes each, and then we'll have a, a discussion based on three statements, three polls, uh, on which you can also vote online. So we would be happy if you would do that. And also, you can send in questions or remarks or anything you want to share within the chat uh, on the screen. So yeah, and I will bring them up here on the table, of course. Um, Let's just start, and um, we will start with a presentation of you, Victor. Um, you are a researcher and educator with a background in landscape and urban design practice in Madrid, Spain. Uh, you are engaged in research on productive cities and landscapes in the context of current technological and ecological transitions. You were involved in uh, some projects, also of Vereniging Delta Metropole, I think, Cities of Making and Automated Landscapes. And right now you are leading a research on more than human ecologies and productive green infrastructures, right? That's it. That's it. And you will give a presentation on the urgency and examples of European uh, collaboration, right? On green cities. Yeah, that's more or less it, yeah. I will give the stage yeah. uh, to you. All right, let me just... Uh... Well, thanks, Sophie, and also thanks Delta Metropole and uh, Philip Volant and Floriade for creating the, this nice space for dialogue. And I will organize my presentation in three points plus a series of propositions that I hope will bring some uh, food for thought for the debate. The first one deals with the uh, current political and social conditions we are in. Um, in the context of the climate emergency and also the effects of the pandemic that we are in, uh, actually a series of windows of opportunity are opening in the form of stimulus packages and uh, recovery uh, plans. Uh, in particular, the Green New Deal is the one that is kind of uh, uh, on the top of the agendas. And uh, the question is uh, how we can harness for transformation these plans. So the Green New Deal, for example, demands cities to uh, prepare by 2030 
uh, uh, an extensive urban greening plan. Uh, it also calls for the protection of 30% of the European land from any development. So it implies that there's not, no more, no much, not so much space for growing in our, our urban footprint. Also, last week it was announced how in the new agricultural policy, uh, farmers who wish to get a subsidy will need to, to reserve 20% of their land for green as well. So that means there is, uh, well, a lot of, 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 of implications for urban planning and for urban design and for, in a way, how do you uh, organize your systems and how do you plan greening. Uh, the challenge as well is that we have a limited time because these funds are not available forever. You have to basically harness that opportunity in short time. Something that is a bit telling about the kind of urgency of the challenges we are in is how the EU has uh, framed uh, its new uh, Horizon program, the research program of the European Commission. And they talk about missions. So basically they see that the challenges are so big and require ideas that are maybe not exist, solutions that are not existing today in terms of technology, social or political uh, uh, innovations that we need to come together in a way as to take the man to the moon. So uh, to think, think, think and think about, no? and bring and think about to the table. And that, of course, means lots of experimentation, lots of risk collaboration in order to align development to uh, the Sustainable Development Goals and to the Green New Deal. Um, that takes me to the uh, second point, which is the point of the only way of getting to that uh, uh, challenges is to shift from small incremental change towards systemic approach and complexity. Uh, usually, it happens to us as well in research that we, uh, our work consists on finding incremental solutions, small steps towards improvement of a process or, an, or the application of, of a method. Uh, and that's okay, that's necessary, has high value, of course, but we need to go beyond mm -hmm. that. And uh, uh, that implies uh, new, I mean, it's not difficult, of course, let's say. It's not easy, it's not, it's very, so it's not easy to make, it's quite difficult, yeah. I have to say. And, but for example, if we talk about improving urban biodiversity or deploying uh, nature-based solutions in cities, we are dealing with systems that are quite complex mm -hmm. and that also extend even beyond the boundaries of uh, our, our administrations, for example. So we need to go across many, many borders, borders between scales, between uh, disciplines, between administrative bodies. So that's, uh, uh, um, I think, a big change in the paradigm of, the, of acting. Uh, there is a lot of innovation in different fields, innovation of technology, innovation in um, planning solutions, in technology, uh, in social innovation. There is plenty of initiatives and networks on urban greening. So we are not lacking that. Though. Uh, the problem is that sometimes they are working in, the, in these classes of innovation operate independently mm -hmm. uh, and silos by discipline or detach from the actual daily practices of cities. So yeah. let's say they propose a solution and then it's not connected to how then it will be into implementation. And of course, uh, uh, innovation is of no use if is not connected to that, to the actual institutional processes and, and how then actually they get into action. And uh, we all can agree that uh, green, dense cities are uh, uh, quite uh, good and, and we want to go into that direction. But if at the end of the day, when it's moment to take a, a hard political choice, uh, we take decisions that undermine that plan and we go into growing uh, uh, our urban footprint into green areas, as was discussed in the Netherlands uh, a couple of weeks ago, I think, in the news. Uh, so, uh, one uh, example in which uh, we try to operate otherwise in terms of dealing with complexity uh, was a project which I was part of, which is called Cities of Making, in which the results of um, interdisciplinary collaboration between uh, Delft, uh, Brussels, UCL in London, and a series of, of cities, mm -hmm resulted in an instrument, a planning instrument, which uh, brings solutions from design and planning, from technology and from uh, policy into a 
system of interconnected solutions. So in a way that to kind of to find complexity and to foster innovation that addresses different systems simultaneously. Uh, another, let's say, uh, um, problem that exists like uh, that in terms of collaboration is like, uh, you know, in order to, to address complexity, we need to go into collaboration. That's the, the, kind of the next step in the, the third point I want to make. Yeah. And improve the existing models that exist. Uh, of course, as I said before, there's lots of projects in which imply there is collaboration. It's always positive, but it's not always effective. It doesn't have always meaningful impact in our lives. And why, it, why is that? Most of the times, there is the problem that collaboration is, is transactional. It's about exchange. So I work with Paola. I, I demand you data and information. I do research, make a report, give it back. And then there's no follow up. There is no, no implications. Because it becomes shelved and that's it. No? Yeah. <laughs> it happens. Uh, sometimes also collaboration brings people who think alike, you know, or that uh, represent the interest of a group. Yeah. For example, many urban green initiatives are actually funded by nursery associations. That's okay, it's good, but implies that the results may bias towards particular interests, and that in a way limits innovation. Yeah. And what I think maybe is the, 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 the let's say the one of the hardest challenges is how to deal with funding. Um, lots of these collaborations are dependent on external funding, either research or philanthropy. And the question is what happens when that funding is over, when it's not awarded, or when uh, the priorities of the funding body uh, change. Uh, there is this case of this famous initiative on, on resilient cities that uh, actually created a movement and the discussion of resilience in, in, in many areas in the world. And it started a slow process of transformation in different cities. No? But maybe it was too slow, and the, the, fund, the, the philanthropists who, who funded this uh, eventually changed its priorities, and uh, on the basis that also it didn't find marketable evidence of success. So he needed something to kind of to show off that there was actually impact of going, yeah. going on. But of course, these things take time. And sometimes capital is a bit impatient, as uh, uh, some people say, you know. And that is a problem. Uh, if we go also into research and understand why certain uh, collaborative initiatives towards sustainability transitions are not successful or not so transformative, uh, we see why. Uh, on the one hand, yeah, most of them, or, or, or a big part of them, really of course, address social needs, so they go to the point of the, of the problem. They involve, through participation, different stakeholders. They engage actors from different uh, disciplines and sectors. They have leadership, but they lack learning, mm -hmm. reflexivity. There is no, let's say, follow-up. Yeah. What, what do we learn? What have we changed in our practices? There is no awareness of the larger systems and the complexity in which we are operating. And there is also a uh, the lack of building capacities across scales and across different agency levels in the, uh, that could kind of enact change uh, in different, different scales and locations. Uh, a colleague of mine from Madrid, who I think you, you will see a video from her later, uh, uh, Teresa Rodriguez, she uh, mentioned how uh, deep collaboration, which is continued between different bodies, is not something which is spontaneous in a system. You have to basically nurture it, you have to uh, um, support it, you have to curate it, and it demands also to create new spaces for discussion mm -hmm. and uh, new leaderships. And we see examples that uh, are uh, interesting to, to, of course, to look at. Um, we all know them, living labs and communities of practice. And for example, this community of practice, which, uh, in which Delta Metropole has been uh, heavily involved uh, about landscape, and it has brought together uh, people and organizations with uh, shared interests and shared knowledge to kind of to improve uh, their practices. And 
Through that collaboration, they come up with ideas such as this break of land vestors, which uh, proposes how uh, citizens and companies could actually uh, fund landscape and green yeah. through uh, uh, donations, crowdfunding, or even business of, models. Yeah. Exactly. Living labs, uh, uh, that's another, another possibility. And uh, in this case, uh, the case I think is interesting, is the one in Madrid, uh, the, uh, a, cent a center of the Politecnico of Madrid, which has taken a step f further in the living lab concept, mm -hmm. so that it's not just about finding solutions and pilots, but actually linking it to public policy. So, uh, of course, that was not easy, uh, in interviews with them, it needed a, a time of building trust between the partners. So how a city council like Madrid would trust solutions developed in academia yeah. to be actually implemented at large scale in a city like Madrid. But in the end, in this case, they, they, uh, uh, several projects are ongoing now. Uh, there was the Metropolitan Forest of Madrid, which is a, a rink of, of uh, 75 kilometers around the city. Uh, the uh, decarbonization roadmap of, of the city as well, uh, and a scheme for companies to fund planted trees in, uh, in compensation for the carbon footprint is also ongoing. So that means that there is uh, uh, possibilities actually of, of going forward and yeah. kind of have deep collaboration between different parties. So I would like to put now a series of yeah, uh, well, statements, propositions that I think that uh, future collaboration should take into account when dealing with uh, the transition towards green cities and sustainable cities. The first one is that we have to invest in these relationships. We, can, we have to go from project thinking to a deep collaboration. So to build trust between different parties in a way to make sure that uh, transformation also happens in the structures of the organizations, both in the research but also in, in um, in the day-to-day -day work in cities. Another one is that understanding that these problems are global, that we are dealing with a, a huge pro problem, so we have to find ways of mediating uh, processes which operate at a planetary level yeah. with the local. And that's also a big challenge. And all the difference yeah, exactly. levels in between. Yeah. Then, uh, we need to be uh, more aware of the in ecological interdependencies and uh, make sure that the network we create in the collaboration is aligned with the different ecological, social, and technological structures. Uh, that means, for example, that yeah, we, if we are in a river or a, on, a, on a kind of a, a the specific kind of landscape, everybody should be involved in that. And also, it means that we have to find ways of involving in the discussion maybe even non-human actors. So who represents nature, for example, yeah. in, the, in these debates? Yeah. Another thing is that uh, we also need to escape from our comfort zones and to introduce uh, a space for debate in which there is symmetry, there is listening between different parties, but we don't have to think all alike. And we have to also learn to create innovation from conflict and disagreement. Another one is about uh, that is linked to what I explained about Madrid is that also it's important that we go from co-creation, uh, which is great of course, towards thinking of implementation and in how to we can actually uh, uh, make experiments in real life yeah. and assess the, the not just the process but also the outcome. And then finally is that uh, in the in several, uh, well, in literature about uh, uh, collaborations of, for sustainability, there is a uh, point in that the role of intermediaries is critical. So let's say uh, agents which are not aligned with, uh, with power structures or with specific interest, but that could uh, empower communities and they could also create system awareness. And here, universities, I think, are in a privileged position to do that and, and uh, to bring also uh, their international networks to a place and to be especially embedded in a local community. Yeah. So from our side in Delft, uh, we are actually willing to, to join cities in this uh, 
well, path towards sustainability and transformation, and to set space to help mediating and uh, to join everybody in this challenge. Well, thanks, Sophie. Nice, thank you, Victor. Um, a lot of things to, to talk about, I think, um, about the implementation and how to work on these networks. But first, I think we'll go to the presentation of Paula, Paula Heiding. Uh, you have been working at the municipality of Almere since August, right? Yes, yeah, a short time. Yeah, a short time. Uh, but as a senior urban planner, and you worked on a, diff a, a lot of different cities around uh, the globe. Uh, city planner, architect, you worked as an architect and city planner in Brazil, Germany, Belgium, and now also in the Netherlands. Um, you collaborated with the, uh, with the Center of Sustainability Consumption and Production, and you coordinated uh, some programs on climate change and circular economy with Platform right. 31 in The Hague. And now you will do a presentation more focused on Almere, right? The sure, mission yeah. and challenges uh, yeah. the city is facing. Now, first of all, thank you very much and nice to be here. Nice to have me. Um, I'd like to go through uh, very shortly or, uh, through the history of uh, our city to the ones that doesn't know it. And um, we are actually the youngest city in the Netherlands and uh, born from nothing. Actually, um, Almere is born from um, land reclaimed from the Isomere. So uh, a powder landscape yeah. could be more Dutch. <laughs> and um, the uh, land reclaim was uh, meant for uh, agriculture. And it took 10 years to make actually the, the area from the end of the 60s, the end of the 50s to the end of the 60s. And the first housing were uh, ready in uh, 76. So it's about 45 years ago that uh, we actually are it's really built. really a young, yeah. young city. And uh, where, uh, as I said, um, the powder was uh, originally meant for agriculture, but after the Second World War, there was a uh, huge shortness of uh, housing in Amsterdam. So instead of agriculture, this area has, Almere has born from the need of having more housing in, yeah. uh, in Amsterdam. And instead of um, having to transform to a more green city, regarding other cities in the world, we are born green. Yeah? The, the whole urban plan of the city is based on the uh, garden city, yeah. where self-contained uh, um, communities were connected by green. And that is, is still uh, the case in our city. And the way that it has been designed at the time is also the way that has been built so far. So that is very uh, interesting that yeah. you see that the plans of a new town just they, they have been as, uh, as they the have meant, the considering that the integration of the urban area and the green area, so uh, green is always close to the, uh, to the neighborhoods yeah. and the, the urban area. Just go through some of the, uh, uh, the developments in the cards, so you can see how it shortly has been built. And in the uh, circle is exactly there where we are now. Yeah. The other is still a building site, mm -hmm. and an international exhibition that will be open uh, next year. Yeah. And um, and even in con what uh, uh, Victor says, eh, the collaboration uh, among cities. This is international exhibition. Uh, it has an own uh, knowledge um, agenda, and from this knowledge agenda, my colleagues set up a whole international network of cities that will come into expose here, and they will continue communicating and uh, together uh, exchange uh, knowledge in the coming years. So it's not only city development, also, but also the collaboration uh, among cities, considering actually green cities. Um, what I said, we, we are born green and our uh, challenge is to keep green. If you understand that our city has a little bit more than 80,000 housing and we have to build more 70, 75,000 in the next 30 years, it's a double. Double. <laughs> we're going to double our city, but we want, don't want to lose actually our green character. And you see that the, the, so in our case, it's not re-establishing the contact with the natural world. Eh? You see also that the nature always take it over when cities are abandoned or buildings are abandoned. But in our case, it's how to keep the quality uh, of our green 
uh, 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 characteristics mm -hmm. and um, where actually the ones living in Almeria are extremely proud. Everyone that you ask in the city, they are extremely proud that they are very close to green areas. And in the sense, um, our department of urban planning developed a new strategy and we actually have a three different kind of landscapes regarding green. We have the wetlands, because we are not only green or water, of course, we are a polder landscape, and a, a rural area, and um, the uh, 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 landscape related to the Bay Area, because we are part of the Amsterdam Bay Area, the metropolitan area. And you can see that um, the new uh, neighborhoods that are uh, developing, they start to not only to be close to green, but they integrated the green in the new development. So yeah. it's not the neighborhood and then uh, surrounded by green, but green is taken over and being developed to, uh, together with the houses. And this is also involved, so also with the whole philosophy that people should be uh, responsible for their own infrastructure, own green or own food. So we have different neighborhoods with own uh, characteristics related to rural, to uh, bay areas and, uh, and wetlands. What we are now struggling, or at least not struggling, but really think about how to uh, uh, develop the, our thoughts regarding the green and uh, the ecological aspect of the city, um, is that it will be very interesting to uh, research how we could go from a system where the person, the human beings are up and then you have yeah. the animals and the plants, eh? who, who is representing nature, yeah, exactly. yeah, what you said. Yeah. And going for a system, actually a more ecological system where our city, yeah. our inhabitants, uh, the people working in it are part of these ecosystems. And uh, last week, uh, and, and now going back to green, uh, green has always uh, a symbolic uh, uh, role in cities, in the uh, Guinigi Tower but also later on in Milan, where uh, actually green yeah. has been introduced to the facades in order to uh, improve biodiversity in the neighborhood. So you see that people are always looking uh, for solutions to introduce green in, uh, in uh, cities, in the new developments. And last week, and I like to show this in the sense of who is representing nature, how we can deal with the, the nature, and we were talking with a group of colleagues um, regarding the ecological uh, connection going through part of the city and we have a meeting with different disciplines so our landscape architect our ecological the one that is responsible for the maintenance in the city uh, and the one uh, responsible for uh, building uh, bridges and i from uh, the perspective of urban planning and it's funny because we have a neighborhood where the water, rainwater, has to be transported to the, the lakes uh, on the north area. And there is this ecological uh, uh, connection. Yeah. And we have to make bridges, actually, in order to be possible that the cars and the persons still can go uh, through uh, up of the, the, these water connections. And then we start to discuss this, if we really want to be a nature-based solution should the bridge be only for the car and for the persons and for the mm -hmm. bicycles, but we should we consider the animals in our area that could, should go also, uh, could, could be able to walk under the bridge. Yeah. And that's a huge discussion because it means that the bridge has, be, has to be much higher than it was only meant for the cars and the bicycles upstairs. And, 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 and then you have a discussion, eh? um, the, the rights of the nature, eh? Do, uh, if you are nature-based, uh, uh, should we consider animals and the, and the vegetation being part of the solution of uh, infrastructure with all the consequences and the price of it? So th this, this kind of things is, are where we are very busy nowadays and does not only talk about uh, how to build new, new uh, neighborhoods, but now to maintain our ecological structure and how to take in consideration actually yeah. the needs of the animals and, uh, and nature. And if we think in this sense, eh, it really integrate nature in the cities, um, I think that is very interesting to, uh, to research in the new development that we have to go through, 
how to integrate the ecosystem services, eh? the services that nature can uh, give us and climate uh, change. A lot of solutions for climate adaptation can be found in green, eh? absorption of water and, uh, uh, and, uh, and solutions for uh, heat and stress. But how we, for instance, could make part of nature of our infrastructure, for instance, for um, clean sewage water, eh? of, and not only improving biodiversity, but uh, uh, lowering down the temperature in our, in our area. So I, we, we are really thinking about from how to make nature part of our city development. And in this sense, you also have to think about not how to introduce the green in our areas, but once they are introduced, maintenance costs a lot of yeah. money. Now we know everything about yeah. that, and we have do we do have uh, uh, neighborhoods where people live in there. They take care of the green, but if we really want to achieve these results and maintain these results, new business models should be seen. Hmm. How to maintain? Who is actually the owner of these green areas? Areas? Yeah. Can we consider more collaboration between municipality? and uh, the ones living or working in the neighborhoods. That's the question that we need to uh, give some uh, uh, attention next time. Yeah. So this is shortly the way that we uh, are thinking about integrated green and uh, taking into consideration the rights of nature and, and of course how to um, uh, be sure that the issue that will be introduced can be maintained and that we as municipalities can pay for it, eh? yeah. because that is a, always a huge issue in a uh, in, in budget of the yeah. municipality, it's so yeah. simple. It's, yeah. I think it always it always is uh, the it's financial part of it. But it shouldn't be forgotten, that's the reason that I yeah. think even what, what Victor mentioned, eh? when setting up a living lab, uh, also the investors should be involved a part of from the beginning yeah. because once you have a living lab you, where you can experience with uh, 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 research institutes and the municipality and uh, 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 people from the neighborhoods. Yeah. I really do believe that the ones that are going to benefit of the result, they have to be involved from the yeah. beginning. Uh, and we have been talking about that the last time. Um, but be sure that the investors, of the, f the ones that could think about new financial models or fiscal models, from the beginning collaborate in this experience yeah. in order to be able to scale up the solutions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We will talk about that definitely uh, uh, more later on. I already have one small question to you, Paula, before we go to the statements. Does Almere also, all, uh, also work together with Amsterdam? And how does sure. that we, work? We, we, are, we are actually, we are a part of the Amsterdam Bay Area. Yeah. So um, the need of housing in this metropolitan area is huge, not, by the way, not only in Amsterdam and uh, in Almere, but we do have a lot of uh, relationships with Amsterdam in Orbe. We have a metropolitan uh, level, mm -hmm. uh, but, but uh, Victor was, was already saying of all the scales that you have yeah. to go through. We have uh, our own um, homework in to, to realize 70,000 uh, uh, new, new housing, yeah. but on the metropolitan level we have to realize about 200,000. So we cannot do that only think about our cities. There yeah. is an organization, colleagues of mine are almost weekly uh, dealing with that. Where where gonna come the, the, the new houses yeah. in which municipality yeah. and depend on the conditions of each municipality, depending on the kind of uh, uh, needs a uh, kind of uh, house topology, so it's it is impossible to do yeah. that. Uh, and and being who is only um, um, one municipality is just impossible to solve the problem. You yeah. have to collaborate to each other to find the best solution for everyone. And who is making the decisions in the end? Like how does that work? Now the, at the end, of the, the decisions are uh, politicians making yeah. the decisions. So actually, we at the municipalities we do the whole research and uh, about how it. It could be solved, but the ones make the, 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 the final decisions there, of course, the politicians, but not only the politicians in our municipalities, but also the politicians at national level. Yeah. And the parliament also decides with us. Yeah. So it's very important, and that's one of the, the, the main tasks, I believe, from someone working at, and, uh, at the municipality is uh, providing the ones that uh, to make to, they have to make the decision 
of the best information. And that's the reason that collaboration among cities is important. That's the reason that collaboration be uh, between municipalities and research institutes are extremely important yeah. to be sure that once you have to make a choice, the one that has to make the choice can make the choice aware of if I choose for this, for one solution, it will, be, uh, it will have consequences for other yeah. possibilities. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's our role, actually, to, to, to provide the ones that have to make the, the, the decision yeah. with the best solutions. Yeah. yeah. It's not that easy. Uh, no, but it's think. fascinating. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think there, I have some more questions, but we will uh, discuss them uh, um, within the conversations about the statements. Let's go to them. Uh, thank you both for your presentations, of course. Um, let's go to the first poll, and you at home can vote as well. Uh, the first statement is um, uh, the European Union should make green cities its top priority uh, because no sustainable development goals can be achieved without them. So make green cities top pri priority um, in order to achieve these sustainable development goals. Um, well, you also uh, addressed the uh, European Green Deal. Maybe it's a bit interlinked. Uh, um, yeah, uh, by, by 2030, all European cities uh, with more than 20,000 uh, citizens, inhabitants, will need to have drafted urban greening plans. Um, well, uh, that, uh, this strategy also calls for increasing the share of local organic farming and shifting to circular economy, uh, industry. And more importantly, the EGDs also aim to uh, legally protect at least 30% of Europe's land, as you uh, stated already. Um, cities uh, will not only need to be greener, but at the same time they will also need to accommodate a growing population, like you said, and the production of food and goods within regional boundaries. So these greening urban areas really need to also, uh, or is needed to, uh, to achieve these development goals. And I see here now uh, some answers already uh, uh, on my screen, but first I'm curious what you are thinking. Um, well, let's start with you, uh, Paola. Um, I think there, there is a picture. I don't know if it can work. Yeah, uh, yeah to the to the. Yeah. Uh, I think the the oh, directors so, have right. to put it on. It's the, the relationship yeah. with yeah. this. Yeah, this one. This right. one. Yeah. I like I like very much this picture. It's a, a a new way of looking at the sustainable development goals. Mm -hmm. It has been designed uh, by a. Um, a resilience center from Stockholm. Yeah. And actually, what they want to say with this reshuffle of the, the sustainable development goals yeah. is that actually your basis is nature, mm -hmm. water, green. Uh, if you don't have that, you're not able to uh, safeguard the societal uh, yeah. aspects. And open it, you need an economy actually that. Uh, uh, make possible that the society aspects and that, yeah. that the city can uh, exist. Yeah. So, if you understand this picture and you have no healthy nature system, mm -hmm. there is no way to have a health and well-being society. Yeah. And there is no way to have new business model and economy in the cities. So you would say yes, make absolutely it absolutely yes, <laughs> absolutely yes. Um, we can talk about this uh, a, a bit more, uh, Victor. Well, what would you I say? Have to say? When I saw this image uh, yesterday, when, when the exchange of presentation, I also thought about what something now you have heard about the, the hierarchy of needs of human needs, the pyramid yeah. of Mas Maslow, no? which talks how to get to human flourishing, to mm -hmm. kind of to, to the good life. Yeah, there is. That's at the top of the pyramid. Yeah. On the bottom, there are the, 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 the intellectual needs, the uh, affective needs, and then the basic needs. Mm -hmm. And the basic needs, of course, is air, water, food. Yeah. And that's you cannot get to human flourishing without that base. Yeah. And now the base is crumbling. And that's actually the, the, the problem that we, we cannot really think about uh, uh, development and new economic without solving that, that problem. Yeah. And we are seeing now how uh, um, there's this going on in, in Canada with the, uh, uh, the extreme heat wave that mm -hmm. is going on. Yeah, that it's only 47, 47 degrees, degrees right? In, in the, I mean, the height of Seattle and yeah. Oregon and, and, and Vancouver, no? It's crazy. Which is crazy. <laughs> and, but uh, today I saw in the New York Times there was a, a comparison between the, uh, the three coverage, the, the three canopy, in the poor neighborhood and mm -hmm. the rich neighborhood. And the yeah. difference was abysmal, really abysmal, a huge difference. And of course, there is a lot of social inequality, 
that could be addressed via greening as well. Yeah. And, and in this case of the also the metropolitan forest, the, the city forest of Boston. Yeah. Which, uh, uh, well, they kind of shift the perspective and saying, okay, we we will use uh, the idea of a forest not just to address the question of resilience, but also to address social inequality and yeah. racial inequality. Yeah. So indeed, there's a lot that can be built on this first layer of, yeah. of nature, of yeah. green. And uh, talking about that, the, the Boston uh, case of the, the, the um, urban forest, there's a small video also on the website uh, of this event page. And uh, Amy Whitesides is explaining this case, actually. and. Um, I, for me, it was really uh, interesting when she said uh, marrying issues of resiliency with issues of social vulnerability and they are tracking these different um, challenges, you may say, or yeah. different issues. So like uh, what you said, in the poorer areas there are less trees, for example, so it's more the heat stress is, is yeah, more up. And they are linking these problems to increase both issues. Is that an example uh, in the, this you call the wedding cake, right? Yeah, this, no, I didn't call it cause uh, the wedding cake. It is a wedding cake. <laughs> so it's a, it's a, it's a party if yeah. we do it well, <laughs> if we bake well. Um, but that's, is that one of the um, uh, examples of how it could be linked? Uh, for you? Yeah, I think so. I, I believe that if we uh, ensure the right of nature and integrate that in a proper way in our city development, we will have a more healthy and, and, and provide well-being to the yeah. ones that, uh, that are going to live in the cities. And uh, in, in this sense, economy has to follow this, this yeah. shift. And but that's just the opposite as it is right now, right? In a way. Well, yeah. Yeah, and, but you see that nowadays also we, we are going through transition eh? and mm -hmm. it's going to take a few decades actually to get done. Um, but I believe that the, the uh, that more and more people realize that there is no other way mm -hmm. and, and that is very important that we all uh, understand why this is so neat. Yeah. Um, yeah I mean, in the end, all goes to the, to the core of social environmental justice here so indeed i mean why rich neighborhoods have more trees than poor neighborhoods mm -hmm. has to avoid taxes with yeah. you know lots of of where how money is distributed in cities so you need indeed i think there's going on with some uh, political leaders which are have more, are more enlightened and mm -hmm. are, are identifying that are there, are there some successful examples some good examples where it's done well already you mean that introducing green in the, in the existing cities? Yeah, and maybe yeah, less human-centered. <laughs> yeah, actually we are born human-centered. Um, human um, <laughs> yeah, actually we have already a very good example of uh, uh, how it should be. We, we are born with green and water and the only work that we have to do is to maintain okay. actually this balance. Uh, and then improving that, uh, improving biodiversity, improving the way yeah. that we integrate the green in our new uh, development, uh, uh, researching the possibilities of make nature part of the infrastructure. Yeah. Um, in this sense, we are very lucky city in the sense that we have no really uh, to deal with the transformation where mm -hmm. uh, Victor was yeah. talking about. Um, we already had the space to be green yeah. and, and our task and even a moral task, I, I uh, say so, is to, uh, to improve actually where we come from and uh, the way that yeah. the city has been planned. And, and this is, well, new developments and that makes it easier, that makes sense. Is it also some kind of, uh, um, yeah, another way of thinking maybe, which is in the culture? Which now, makes it what more we, easy? We, because we, we of course have new neighborhoods, they still have to be built from scratch. Mm -hmm. But for instance, the whole uh, central area of Almeida, we have to build in this area 15,000 more uh, housing. To densify. Yeah, the densify. Because in this sense, it's, it's an it's a, a issue that other cities are going through as yeah. well. And we also have to, uh, to uh, densify the city center and also the uh, existing neighborhoods. And we already said we're going to densify, but it's a green strategy to densify the yeah. city center. Yeah, that is so, uh, and, and then it's a similar struggle with other yeah. cities. No, I, I, I mean, about the topic of, of maintenance and, and individual green, and I was thinking about the, the, the image you show about the, the, um, the garden cities, how mm -hmm. garden cities, which uh, in some of the drawings he had uh, in, the, in his original plan, 
actually the green areas are not just green empty areas. There is a, a text which has plenty of work. They, it's actually productive landscapes uh, uh, that he, he proposed. So it's not a passive nature. It's actually a place where people can actually work. Mm -hmm. And that links with the topic of, of, of maintenance and, and care of this infrastructure. We had to find ways of making it a job, an employment. That actually yeah. the, the, the value of that work is 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 uh, uh, is kind of put. Uh, uh, is, I mean the, that is valued the work of taking care of nature. Yeah. The same as uh, now uh, nobody questions that uh, um, there should be uh, a company taking care of a highway. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So in a way is it about priorities? It's about priorities, priorities, and I think that it's about. I guess there's, there should be some political uh, urgency. For mm -hmm. example, uh, we know how uh, oil companies are transitioning quickly towards the green yeah. uh, fuel, for example, no? because they, their business is over with the, mm -hmm. with the fossil fuels. Why not infrastructure, infrastructure companies, building companies, could also kind of get to the point that ah, maybe we should also also transition towards a new type of infrastructure. Yeah. Yeah. And that implies also jobs in terms of R and D, in terms of actually, uh, uh, well, um, gardening. I don't know. Yeah. Like that could be they could become the next the, the the kind of the most valuable jobs in the future, taking mm -hmm. care of of, of, of this base of the pyramid, yeah, of, of yeah. this the wedding cake. Yeah, yeah. So that uh, yeah, we that requires a new. It requires kind of a thinking. change of, of of thinking also. Like that, what we consider low skilled jobs now. Mm -hmm. Actually, they should have a priority in yeah. terms of, of even public uh, public jobs, yeah. or public investment as well. Yeah. So more awareness, urgency, yeah. uh, um, and priority exactly. to this urban greening. I have another question. Almere is a new town. We discussed that. Are there any lessons learned uh, or or to be learned from other green new towns in sure, Europe? Sure. There is a new. Uh, there is a whole uh, infrastructure network of the uh, new towns. Not only what the, cities, for example. Now the Netherlands has twelve new towns, yeah. for instance. So, and there is an institute for new towns mm -hmm. uh, that they used to be based in in Almere, and I, if I'm not wrong, they are now in Rotterdam. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so there is a network of new towns at the national level, but there is also a, inter a, a network of new towns at uh, international level. Yeah. So we also have a lot of uh, contacts with uh, one of cities in uh, in England, uh, Milton. Milton Keynes. Uh, yeah, Milton Keynes actually to learn it to each other because all the cities, um, the new towns, they, they, they have been built, then they go through uh, uh, small transformations, yeah. they start to get old. We have a lot of neighborhoods that now they have to be uh, restructured. Mm -hmm. that, that, so in this sense, we almost go through the same phases. Yeah. And that, so we are part of a network to learn to each other and it is much because for instance, you, you ask it, all the, the the collaboration with Amsterdam, for instance. Mm -hmm. Of course, there is it, but Amsterdam has to completely it's different, totally different city yeah. history but from. So, um, so we do. We are part of this uh, international mm -hmm. network of new towns to learn from each yeah. other. And can you give an example of one of the lessons learned? Now we we all have one of the lessons learned. Of actually, one of the constatations is that. Uh, Certainly, we have at the same time a lot of neighborhoods that have to be actually uh, refurbished. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's in, in one time. So it's not yeah. a city that grows uh, yeah. close. Mm -hmm. But suddenly we have we have actually the half of the city now is a project. Yeah, yeah. because we have to transform the cities to uh, update yeah. uh, to rethink about. Uh, uh, what is in the neighborhoods, what kind yeah. of housing people need now, uh, so, so the society changes mm -hmm. and so how and business changes. And, and, uh, and this kind of talks we have with other new towns. Yeah, so yeah. And maybe we can go to the next uh, poll because it's that is about uh, exchanging knowledge between cities uh, and we can go a bit more into depth about that. Uh, the second statement is cities are not islands, they can't become truly green um, by themselves, they really need each other. Um, While well, planning and financial urban greening, well, it is challenging, as stated before, uh, cities are not on their own. You already stated there's a lot of knowledge, uh, but we really need to share that knowledge. Um, yeah, that is really needed to work towards these, uh, these greener cities. Um, let's see if we already have some uh, uh, votings in here. I think they will come in a bit. Yeah, I see them now. 
Um, well, let's start uh, with uh, Victor. Um, I can, well, maybe guess what the answer will be, but uh, uh, what would you say? Well, I mean, indeed, I mean, we were dealing with natural systems and green systems. Yeah. We know that they are not, I mean, nature doesn't understand of, of our borders, our administrative borders. No. So, uh, watersheds, forests, uh, animals, they just... Yeah. Well, they, they float, move, they yeah. They <laughs> float in, 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 the, in, the, in, the, in the territory, no? Yeah. And so that we need to find a ways of aligning that mm -hmm. to our actual planning process. Yeah. And, it's and a global issue. It's a global issue, issue. And, and yeah. of course, it's kind of different scales are nested on, mm -hmm. on each other. But indeed, we cannot think of making, let's say, an uh, 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 idea of a, of a green belt of a, of a around the city, if, and then if one city is not collaborating or is yeah. not part of the discussion, then what the, 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 the system is not closed and yeah. then it's, it's totally yeah. uh, uh, well, sure. uh, underperforming. No? Mm -hmm. So indeed that means that we need to change uh, that understanding of awareness of, yeah. of, the, yeah. of our interdependency yeah. with larger systems. And that's systems. On, a, on a physical level and if we look at an um, uh, international uh, level like uh, uh, this, this international network of cities uh, sharing knowledge, well, it could be, for example, I mean, because there, there is one thing, like, let's say, now, of course, we all like planting trees. That's, uh, that's mm -hmm. something it's good, that it's good to plant trees, but... Put more it, trees. But uh, <laughs> also other landscapes are good performing in terms of, like, a carbon capture. It's about also yeah. the quality of the soil and, the, let's say, a prairie or a, a moor can, can kind of absorb also carbon. Then you don't have to plant trees all the time. So you yeah. have to also understand the, the kind of landscape you're operating in. I find it very interesting in Calmeda that you have these different landscapes and you understand that the is not homogeneous, it's not a one, one solution for everything. Yeah. And in a way, uh, this collaboration should also learn from cities which have a similar landscape condition mm -hmm. in the sense of how do you do it. Yeah. And, and because let's say it could be counterproductive to plant trees in, in an existing landscape which maybe already is performing well. And in the end, it's a global goal we have to achieve. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. All right, uh, Paola? Out. What I like in, in the collaboration of learning from each other, actually you have a borderless system, eh? depending on the scale, and yeah. we, everything related to water ecology we don't do by ourselves. We have a lot of communication at the uh, uh, provincial level mm -hmm. with Flavorland. But what is interesting in, in when you work on a network, uh, even if it's the, the not connected by the, the, the trees, but other part of the, the world, yeah. is, and especially in urban areas, is, um, I, I, for instance, I was very impressed when I was in China and in Shanghai, and I saw the way that people use the public area, the green areas, the parks. They're How almost they a second it? home. Ah. Yeah, they, they, they do sport, they read. It's much, the, the use of the green areas are much more intense than we see uh, yeah. most of the times in the Netherlands. Maybe also because the houses are a of bit course. larger. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. that's, that's, that's the point of what I got. What is very interesting in these collaborations is that sometimes you have the same questions of the same, same issues. Yeah. And, and uh, it's, it's a borderless systems, but you have the political aspects, you have yeah. economic aspects, you have the cultural aspects. So green in the cities and the question on how to do that, uh, when you work in a network, you can understand that the different solutions are because the same questions are approached from different um, angles. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes a political angle, sometimes a cultural yeah. angle, sometimes economic angle. But uh, so um, you have one question, and that's very nice, and possible 10 different answers. Yeah. And on the fact that you approach the question from another angle, it is a kind of eye opener to the cities. Yeah. So, and oh, I didn't think new solutions. That's the, yeah. And that's, the, I mean, that's the, the, the most valuable aspect of working in a network yeah. that can understand that the question that you have being approached from another angle could provide you for another solution. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly, and maybe that has to do also with shifting terminology from sol day of solutions, mm -hmm. something that is like a, you can just transport to a, to a context copy -paste. and, and <laughs> a kind of copy-paste, uh, but to be actually very much context aware mm -hmm. that, that everything has to, everything depends. Yeah. It depends on the culture, depends on the, on the, on the way, even the, the, the topography of the place and the case of, of Medellin, for example, that uh, Medellin, the, the transformation of the city of Medellin uh, uh, was very much inspired by the transformation of Barcelona, which like mm -hmm. the urban acupuncture idea in the 80s, oh. and they were taken. Yeah. Uh, 
But of course, it looks totally different because it has a different topography, yeah. different networks of transportation, climate, yeah. different, so, different climate, different kind of social structure. But the strategy uh, talk to each other. So in a way, it's a, a good translation to a specific context. And that, in yeah. a way, the dialogue was for part of a network, of course, of, because people st have studied in Barcelona and they went to, back to, to the country. Yeah. So there is, there's this kind of, I think, the, 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 the language of talking about solutions mm -hmm. could be a bit uh, yeah, uh, going against us. In yeah. some way, that yeah. we need to, to shift a bit to 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 uh, that, that what I question about like the, the from the very general to the specific of the place yeah. where you are working on. Yeah, because that's interesting. Because then you are saying it doesn't matter uh, where where you go to. There's always something to learn, but you have to have some kind of similar challenge, yeah. right? Yeah, and and I believe when we when you go through other cities and walk, you see solutions. But it is very um, helpful to understand why the solution has been sought in that way and what when they went yeah. through in the implementation of that. Eh? Yeah. So, of course, you can go cities and understand, oh, this feels all right, I feel pleasant here, I see the, how people enjoy. But it's, uh, in, in the collaboration, you go much deeper to understand why did you think about the solution, uh, what kind of problems you get, went through to, to implement, uh, yeah. which parties you had to uh, involve in order to uh, make a successful solution. And, and that is something that uh, we have to stimulate. Yeah, yeah. I have a question um, uh, to go a bit more about uh, uh, the, the green cities, the, the basement of the wedding cake. Uh, Janine was asking, do architects and building companies have enough knowledge about how nature works? What do you think? <laughs> you well, both probably have we don't. I mean, I mean, I'm talking as, a, as an architect. I, yeah. I don't have all the knowledge in the world. I mean, I can kind of understand where I can get that knowledge from. Yeah. And, but that's part of like a, of this ego thing that you show that, that, that we have to also uh, 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 not be not be afraid of showing that we don't have the knowledge and we, yeah. we have to rely on others in the collaboration. Yeah. And and where can we find the knowledge? Is that a collaboration with universities, for example? Of could be universities. Could be, yeah, indeed. I mean, it's it's uh, but also also other type of organizations, nature organizations, mm. and and. and well, even, yeah, even this, uh, community organizations could know more about the, the place that that that, uh, that we do. Yeah, uh, just, of course, architects don't have the, the, at, the don't have all the knowledge to how to integrate green, and mm -hmm. I believe that they d even didn't should want to know everything yeah. because it's another discipline. Yeah. So it is extremely important to work more interdisciplinary. Yeah. 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 And I said, each specialist in his own silo, and it's quite all right, because then you get the best knowledge in yeah. each, from each discipline. Uh, but uh, working together, interdisciplinary, yeah. being uh, depend on each other to find the best solution, that's the way. Yeah? And like I told about, we were thinking about the new bridges. Mm -hmm. And I was, I, I, I was a representative of urban planning, my colleague mm -hmm. landscape, and uh, the other, we had an ecologist, and yeah. the one that uh, um, uh, knows everything about structures of bridges, and the one talking about maintenance. And we had one hour extremely good uh, discussion uh, pointed from our disciplines what the solution could be. Yeah. And the solution at, is at the end not from one discipline, yeah. but of the collaboration among disciplines. Yeah. So um, my advice will be never try to know everything. Yeah. Because at the, end, the at, at the end you know uh, to, you can't know to, everything. To little, to little yeah. of everything. Yeah. Yeah. So, so. Is that also something uh, cities can learn from each other? This new way, is it a new, yeah, I think it's a new way, right? Of collaborating and working towards these green cities? Well, I mean, in the end, it's about this well, the, the already overused thing of reinventing the wheel. That, mm -hmm. that yeah. we don't have to start always from scratch. Yeah. And cities should not try to start from scratch. There should be always a moment in which there's reflection about its own history as well. Yeah. How it was done in the in the in the in the past, let's say, and, and even learning from history, in how it was done in other places, mm -hmm. and then uh, how it's been other, in other locations, and yeah. then of course then translate it into the specifics of the context what we were discussing before. Yeah, yeah. And but indeed, uh, uh, I guess that also is something that uh, has to do with politics as well of being in, being the the first one doing something, the innovation, the, the kind of be always the you know. And, um, try to be different to other others. Mm -hmm. That could be a way, a bit, let's say, undermining the, that. But I think that's the, the the only way. Let's say to be in the, in the urgency we have, we have to go go fast, move quickly. Yeah. And a way this exchange is the the only way that I, I believe could 
uh, allow us almost as a species <laughs> to, yeah. to continue in this planet. Yeah, and, and we were talking about these well, uh, different solutions when working together and exchange knowledge. When implementing this to a specific location, is it then also uh, beneficial to work with other cities to really to work towards that yeah, implementation on that speci specific location? Or is that uh, this is it's an interesting it's question. Yeah. It's a tricky it's question. A tricky question. <laughs> actually, when you're looking for answers, it's very nice to understand how the same question has been answered from different angles. Mm. But yeah. when you come specifically to the implementation yeah. in, in, in certain conditions, uh, um, then you should have collaboration with cities with most of the same conditions. Yeah. yeah I, I mean, suppose very technical, uh, if you want to have a kind of vegetation and you have a, a specific kind of soil, we, we have a dramatic soil for that, yeah. for instance. Um, it's not used for us to understand how the, the, the vegetation has been implemented in a di completely different kind of soil, yeah. because it doesn't gonna work implemented yeah. here, the trees gonna die. Yeah. yeah. So it is, it's, I believe that, that to in in the way that you approach the question is good to understand um, how other cities uh, approach them. Yeah. But at the point that you have to implement, it is very very useful to understand and to learn from cities with almost the same conditions. Yeah. yeah. And and I think also something that could be uh, uh, quite interesting is how when one translates something into a different location and then finds a moment in which uh, a barrier that impedes that to happen, mm -hmm. that we're going to stop, but we go more deep to, into the problem of, of how, what planning structures, what kind of uh, legislation yeah. uh, are a barrier for, impl for implementation of something that could work. On that specific Yeah, and, and, and sometimes there is, let's say, uh, uh, um, in that pro in the project I was talking about cities of making, mm -hmm. that uh, of course the, the, the rules that exist now for organizing uh, mixed use with industry are based on one type of industry which is polluting, uh, noisy, you know, mm -hmm. and so you cannot have housing next to, to a factory, you know. But now we have technologies which are cleaner. Yeah. But the legislation doesn't allow for the mix because okay. yeah. uh, it's, not, it's categorized as industry. Yeah. And the same happens, for example, in, I was a case in, in Madrid in which uh, uh, there was a project to make a, a, a park uh, by a famous Japanese architect, which was uh, meant to uh, clean sewage water yeah. in a proce mm. natural process. No, it never happened in the end, uh, fully. But one of the main barriers that happened was that by law, yeah. you could not have that water exposed because people can get w contact with water which yeah. is not clean. And then we come back to the wedding cake, right? So like we go to the to the moment in which okay, they, then we have to innovate. Okay, we design is good, but we have to keep innovation also in the. Uh, planning level in the, uh, yeah. the law legislation level as well yeah. to make this possible yeah. and, and, and of course there will be trade-offs yeah. maybe some areas that cannot be accessible for people and that's it yeah. but it's something that we have to go into that uh, direction yeah yeah when we're talking about organizing this collaboration we already <laughs> talked about this the different uh, socio-economic uh, um, uh, circumstances for example uh, different legislations how to set up like there are so many barriers i think it's language is these different systems yeah what are your experience well i think it's i mean i think the most important element is trust building trust and and, and not be impatient be mm. kind of dedicate time to to the collaboration and like what a, what a time and, and sometimes you require inform it requires a lot of inf informality as well informal connections and kind of uh, yeah. taking care of, of uh, almost to a kind of a personal level and then build on that so it takes a few so years it's a fun, yeah so we have to 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 also be taking that into account and that's the problem with funding that funding yeah. pushes us to to work in very limited time and to be collaborations sometimes just for the sake of applying for a yeah, for funding, no? Fun. And then there is no actual uh, uh, well, uh, chemistry, you know, yeah, or whatever. And, and trust Sometimes it works, and this, and trust, yeah. and, and then that's why things don't go into the actual day-to-day uh, um, um, -day practice of, of, of the our city. implementation, yeah. And so, but of course that, that, that's against the idea of urgency, so yeah. we have to, in a way, uh, uh, well, create new spaces for that, like mm -hmm. these debates is, is 
one step, the Floriade with the, the, the linking that knowledge yeah, uh, program definitely. that kind of uh, pushes that. And, and also it, it requires that, uh, that people who are in the position of leadership mm -hmm. understand that and invest in, that, in the, their time in, in creating this collaboration as well. Yeah. Yeah, and, and you know what it is, because um, there are a lot of organizations that already work day and night for, to, to, uh, to make this collaboration mm -hmm. possible. Right? So uh, as a municipality, we have to rely on these uh, existing structures yeah. in order to not, we, we, we will not set up a whole, yeah. uh, uh, every time a whole uh, structure to yeah. collaborate with other cities. Floriade is an exception because it's a, it's a part uh, organization yeah. with uh, the... the the exhibition aspect, but um, for us the city is very, very important to rely on existing structures mm. and also uh, in the system of, uh, of financing and funding. For instance, uh, Victor approached the, our municipality to, uh, for the Floriade and the new development area, Pampus in Almeida, where we discussed the collaboration. And when we are asked, believe we have a lot of work. And our daily work. <laughs> Everyone has a lot of work. A <laughs> lot of work. And when we have some such a question, we do understand it's a huge, great opportunity to improve our quality of mm. work. But at the same time, we always have to search how to um, embed his question in our daily mm. work. Eh? For instance, we, we discussed about a collaboration regarding a funding uh, system and um, one of the parts of the work was setting up a living lab for co-creation. And I said, all right, we have a new area. I have a, 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 a knowledge agenda to develop the whole program of requirements of this area mm -hmm. and we do want to involve people, the community. Yeah. So in this sense, he has a question from the perspective of uh, a research institute that I, if I think about it, say, hey, that's very useful, but I do have to embed in hmm. our work. It has to be a win-win situation. Exactly, exactly. And, but that, so, but that in, indeed means that, I mean, in this case, it was a bit of luck that it happened, but uh, the collaboration should be sustained, continued, so that these yeah. opportunities are actually tapped into more efficiently, so that yeah there is more communication and then indeed we arrive on time so that we don't arrive with a solution for an instrument mm -hmm. but then already the plan is done yeah you know and then it's, it's no use yeah, yeah so yeah. in a way it's it's a, a, a it is this balance it's a balance working fast and exactly yeah and and also we uh, briefly mentioned uh, the citizens what they do get out from this collaboration you already mentioned that they should be involved yeah, because at the end they are the ones that are going to benefit of the solution. Yeah. This, in this sense, is very useful and it's, in my opinion, just uh, need to understand how people uh, uh, want to live or want to work, of how they want to collaborate uh, in, in the, the deal uh, development. Um, because this, this, let's say, it's a creative process eh? and, uh, and I say, always say that uh, curiosity is the basis of a creative process. And um, we have at the municipality two or three months ago uh, talks with the city. So I was a moderator talking with, with citizens mm -hmm. and, and due to Corona, we did all digitally. So it was very funny to be in their houses at the same time. Yeah. So yeah. thank you for having me at your <laughs> place. But it's, it's, um, they bring us actually the information that we need to be aware uh, that our solution is going to yeah. work. Yeah. Yeah. On a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah, yeah. but that's, yeah. that, that's the reason that we make cities for yeah. the, day, the daily basis. Yeah. Uh, so it, it is a kind of present that people want to talk, collaborate, that they want to talk about what yeah. they are proud of the city, that uh, what are their concerns and what are their uh, 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 dreams of expectations. Uh, that, and, and that is in one talk and that if you want to have that in a longer period is a living lab ideal situation because you put all the parties together. Uh, at the end, we make the city for the people, but people are part of making the cities. Yeah. And in, we, in Almeria, we have the Almeria principles, and people make people make the cities one of the seven principles mm -hmm. that we have. Yeah. Um, and let, let's be honest, the only reason that we make cities is because people want yeah. to live there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so they should be involved. Yeah, of course. Yeah. We are sitting here, well, because of the Floriade, of, for sure. Um, this will be. This will start in in April till October uh, next year. Um, 
with a lot of different, uh, well, international pavilions building here, what role can this Floriana yeah, play as, as, as this platform uh, between all these different cities and, and, and countries on an international scale? Um, now, like I said, the Florida has a knowledge agenda yeah. with different uh, uh, focus and activities. One of them is setting up international network uh, with cities that uh, work on the same team, uh, the Green Green cities in this case. Um, and uh, this is an international collaboration where you can learn from each other, but there is also uh, one line where we do uh, research. That my colleagues, by the way, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm a little bit involved in that. But, um, so. The Florian is actually a great opportunity to uh, understand and to research what is the next step. Yeah. Yeah? And it is a place that during months uh, we can see uh, new solutions, we can see innovation, uh, where talks are going to take place, yeah. change ideas, uh, learning more people, being curious, uh, curious about uh, uh, other people. Um, and, and that is a fantastic event, actually, yeah. to, to give us more insights in uh, uh, yeah. our, uh, and even reflect on our questions. Eh? Sometimes, and that's daily on daily you basis. Yeah. 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 Yeah, to, me, to me, it's an opportunity as well, in the sense that, I mean, that having that uh, idea of the, of the research uh, uh, program, in the, in the uh, knowledge program in the Florida, is to mm -hmm. Because these exhibitions are usually like a trade thing, like it's about trading sure, and yeah. about no, sell, yeah. selling solutions Listen, and yeah. that, no? And that's okay, but then that knowledge cluster could allow to to help this question of translation. Okay, mm. what does it mean to translate this solution that was developed in Netherlands to a somewhere context else somewhere else? else. Yeah. It's not just about copy pasting, it's about, and this way we can actually, uh, the knowledge institutions can provide that support yeah. and, and, and make this, indeed, this, uh, uh, um, this exhibition uh, a step further the yeah. usual way of operating. Yeah, which is what, like, like you stated yeah. uh, in your presentation, yeah. Um, I have one more question for now, till we go to the uh, last statement. Recently, green policy is being uh, enforced by judges and lawyers. Yeah. Uh, should the European legal systems also collaborate on this? Yeah, definitely, I think. I, I think we, saw, we see that so, law. Someone should represent nature, so yeah. that in yeah. this sense is... Uh, yeah. yeah. In the end, that is uh, it's about the, indeed environmental justice, and then somebody has to, to put that on the table. Give and them and a voice. indeed, yeah. uh, maybe uh, some enlightened judge can start this this yeah. this strength as well. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and it's it's not only the question of justice um, towards nature, mm -hmm. but at the end, we are the ones. We are nature as well. Be benefit. <laughs> so we should take be the responsibility to because we give it a benefit. Yeah. 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 I think that that's always a, is a step. Is beyond the, <laughs> the idea of the mod modernist thought that uh, nature is separate from culture, yeah. Yeah. we are one thing, and we yeah. have to, to acknowledge that we are dependent on, the, on, 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 on those natural systems. We're part assistance. of that larger system. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, yeah, should it be really included in the legal system, the, the, the question? Yeah, is I believe so. Why shouldn't be like that. We have all regulations for urban planning, and regulations yeah. for buildings. But just uh, you for cannot people. build a building that yeah. is not according to the building yeah. regulation. Yeah. So perhaps we should have a regulation for biodiversity. Yeah. Actually, yeah. there is one at yeah. the European yeah. level, but yeah. all the make part. Uh, if if you apply for a building permit, that is not uh, only considering the the building permit yeah. for the building, but for the. The, the, the green, green green to, to, to set up a experiment about beautiful that. project of, of Bruno Latour, yeah. the Parliament, the parliament of, of, of Things, things. Yeah. Yeah. which thought, okay, yeah, how do you organize a parliament in which the yeah. river has a voice, yeah. and then... Yeah. And all the small and little uh, indeed, insects and... There is yeah. an a, a actual uh, representation of these uh, elements in, yeah. the, in the discussion. Yeah, and a human is just one thing and, in this larger problem. And here is when yeah. creative practices can help as well. Yeah. So artists and, and, and philosophers and yeah. sociologists can actually have a voice as well in this yeah. process. So and we will have uh, uh, at Floriada also uh, discussions and debates maybe with artists and... Uh, yeah. Why not? 
Yeah. They, they can help us to reflect on to the reflect daily on questions. That. It's all yeah. reflecting. Yeah. 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 And, and, and what I meant also in collaboration with cities, it has to do with how to approach the same yeah. same question from a different angle. Yeah. And a philosopher and artists, they have a, a, a of the box angle thing. actually yeah. to approach the questions that we are architects are daily, or on our daily yeah. base. Uh, perhaps we forget sometimes that yeah. reflection. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nice. Let's go to the um, next uh, statement, the third and last statement. Uh, it is about uh, larger cities and smaller cities and town working together. And the statement is as follows. Large, uh, large innovative, innovative cities like Madrid and Amsterdam should actively share their tips and tricks with smaller cities for free. That is the statement. Um, as said, it is really challenging. It, it takes a lot of capacity, uh, uh, like human uh, capacity, but also knowledge. And I think most of them are in these larger cities um, and they should really uh, share their knowledge for free with the smaller towns. Um, well, let's go to you. What do you think? Should they share it for free? Well, I think for free, I think indeed, I mean, nowadays is is charging for the knowledge. I think that, that it doesn't, doesn't happen like that. Yeah. But there is uh, some sort of like, a, uh, uh, let's say, cities, big cities have more capacity in general, yeah. more also uh, 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 they can bring together a stronger network of actors in the discussion. Mm -hmm. So knowledge institutions tend to be in bigger cities. Yeah. Except those, maybe. So they and, <laughs> <laughs> and others. So that there is always like a more more capacity that could, they could they could harvest. Yeah. And then that knowledge can be then uh, uh, well translated or in, they, they can they, in a way they should uh, be also uh, cities big cities should be more modest and always include the smaller cities in the, who are mm. especially the, in in a regional sense. Yeah. That uh, they are not the center, center of the world or the region. They should be aware that the others are equally important yeah. in these, these systems. So it's not like we're better. The, the big cities are exactly. I think that, that that attitude, which I guess happens, should be abandoned. Yeah. And 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 in a way, be let's say take a position more of leadership. Yeah. In the in 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 the in the conversation because they have the capacity to do that. Actually. Yeah. So it's a yes, but with some. Yes, and also there are more more buts, but I think you would. Right. Uh, you know, it's almost it's a question related to morality. It seems like if you have more resources, yeah. then you are you have you need to help the smaller mm -hmm. ones, and um, and if you say that you consider that having more resources, you also able to have more better solutions that yeah. you have to share to other ones. And once I had the privilege to interview uh, a Brazilian architect and it was also a politician, uh, mm -hmm. Jaime Lerner, who passed away two, three weeks ago. Yeah. And I, he said in his interview, and I wrote down, if you want creativity, cut a zero of your budget. If you want <laughs> sustainability, cut two zero of your budget. <laughs> And it is so in this sense, um, of course, cities with more resources are able to organize themselves better in this sense, have a faster answer for certain questions that they can share with cities with less uh, conditions. Mm -hmm. But it's very interesting. I brought a picture, it's not about the green, but um, the bus stops, right? Yeah. Um, Jaime Lerner did, did, did develop in, uh, in a city in south of Brazil. Uh, he's architect, but at that time he was mayor of the city. And he developed actually a system with buses that it hates, uh, it uh, calls a bus rapid uh, transit. Mm -hmm. The city didn't have money for a subway. Yeah, for faster transportation, for yeah. mass uh, transportation. So he said, let's take the, the, the qualities of a metro system and apply it to a bus system. So, and that was mainly having the platforms mm -hmm. and the bus stops and people can easily get in and get out and they were buying their tickets before yeah. getting there. So a metro, a metro system, but used by bus. And the solution came because he didn't have money. <laughs> now this solution has been implemented in 200 cities around the world. So. Did he, he didn't have the resources, find out a good solution that yeah. has been applied uh, in 200 other cities. Yeah. And more interesting on, in this system, uh, regarding a, a, a lack of resources, the buses had to stop exactly in one position 
to that people that the door of the buses were aligned with the door of the platform. Yeah, as we see yeah, right we here, see people there. just can. So we were trying to find out a technical solution. Everything was too expensive, too expensive. <laughs> and he, as a mayor, just went to talk to the driver, yeah. bus drivers, and said, "What do you need for me to understand why you have to stop?" Yeah. And the driver just said, "Paint a white stripe on the platform, <laughs> and I know where I have to stop." So, in one sense, of course, cities with more uh, resources, they have the, uh, the the possibility to organize themselves better yeah. to find solutions. But I I suggest not to forget that exact that, that sometimes the the, the shortest, uh, shortage yeah. of resources can bring us to a very creative and usable yeah. solution. And maybe also because I think uh, uh, people who are using it, there are not so many management levels or, or it, it could to go be, I don't know, but yeah. So it is not from the, the big cities with more resources helping the small cities, yeah. but I do believe that should be a, a, a two ways uh, yeah. relationship. Two ways, exactly, asymmetrical, because otherwise we fall into these narratives of development and kind of patronizing that the, the, the rich one yeah. tells the poor how to do it. No? Yeah. And I mean, you, that's also the case of, of I mean, a, Cuba, for example, in La Habana, where they have this kind of impressive system of urban farming, mm -hmm. which could be the, I mean, uh, uh, a model which could be embraced in some other places. Uh, and, and, but no, we want to have our own, our own way of developing, no? And which, but we could learn a lot from, this, from these countries in which the different uh, difficulties, hardships, or let's say, uh, uh, lack of capacity brings up innovation. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. You also see it uh, at uh, um, the, the public uh, voting at the poll. Last uh, voting, everyone voted yes, and now uh, also some people um, voted no. So like there, yeah, yeah, I think it's uh, more... For example, the talk of, of green infrastructure, one of the, of the well-known and probably one of the first cases of green infrastructure uh, plans mm -hmm. was a small town, in, well, a medium town in Spain, Vitoria. It was not a big city. And they managed to develop this kind of uh, develop a, they yeah. created a, a, an office for that, and then that has been the model that has been uh, replicated yeah. also as a, as a standard in terms of, of green infrastructure. Yeah. So this is about developing new solutions and innovative solutions. What about upscaling? Well, wow, that's a very good, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a very difficult question. <laughs> yeah. I just I've been told that yeah. I I don't know everything, so I'm just asking you for the knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> now it is it is funny because even uh, in a, a research institute setting up a pilot a living lab is, is yeah. not that difficult as long as you find the, the, the good partners to work on that but once you find a solution mm -hmm. and we do have for instance in Almere a lot of pilots successful pilots regarding yeah. circular economy we are really good in mm -hmm. that and we had last week at, at, at a meeting with the teamwork on that fun how can we scale up yeah yeah, what we do we need? So, actually, we still don't have the answer. But one thing that I learned is what I mentioned before. When setting up a pilot of a living lab, make sure that the one that can invest on the product mm -hmm. in order to scale up is involved from the beginning. Yeah. And do you think that is easier in larger cities? Or I have no idea, actually. Uh, I mean, it, de it depends. I think that, for example, in, in, in uh, to scale up, uh, business model, let's say, maybe the critical mass, having a critical mass of people who can make use of that model yeah. and also the, to have people who have the skills and the, the, to, to kind of engage in that kind of work, maybe a, a big city could have more advantage in, yeah. advantage in making that work. Yeah, we, we have also an example, um, we just discussed the example of Boston, yeah. uh, which is a small video on the, on the event page on the website. There's also a video about uh, uh, Madrid, right, with a huge uh, uh, green uh, forest, a ring of 75 kilometers of, of uh, um, yeah, well, urban, urban forest. forest. And um, that is in a large city, uh, also um, uh, collaborating with high schools, for example, uh, uh, in private investors as well. Do you think that is typically something uh, that can be developed in a larger city? Well, I think indeed that the, the, what you mentioned about the high schools and, and, and the kind of pedagogy education is important because to scale up, you yeah. also need to change behaviors and change education. Yeah. So in a way, there, is, there has to be a, 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 a kind of a, a very complex uh, understanding of this that we also have to tackle on on citizens mm -hmm. before scaling up. We cannot scale up an idea which citizens will not embrace. Yeah. 
So and that implies maybe going to, to a level of high school and kids to come to learn to to to, yeah. to understand that, that 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 way of doing something is the future and they they should uh, uh, yeah. kind of take part of it and embrace it. Yeah. And there they are doing it in a large city. In, yeah. in, in the example in South Brazil, it's a smaller town, right? Where the uh, line between the mayor and the bus driver itself is well, there's a there's a s short connection. Um, so yeah, does that matter for you, like uh, the the largest cities now and smaller towns? Because it is considered a small city in Brazil, but it's still a, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's pretty still large. It's much larger than Dutch <laughs> cities. So, so we have only small know, towns in the also depends very much of the, the personality of the ones working mm. at it. A mayor said, I'm just going to talk to yeah. the bus yeah. driver. Yeah. Yeah. And he started to, 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 to have uh, uh, advisors and he said, well, I have a very simple question. Yeah. yeah. And so it, it depends just very much about the way that people position themselves in the whole process. Yeah. And about, yeah, about knowledge, about like we can also rely on knowledge, which is not formal knowledge. And that actual creativity, which is not that's happening in in this context of, of universities or research, yeah. but actually there is knowledge in the way citizens uh, and professionals work. Yeah. Let's say you want to, to to develop a forest in a city, maybe you should talk to the the gardeners and the people who are actually working there to see how yeah. it should be done because they can then maintain it. Again, maintain bring it. knowledge exactly. to the table. Yeah. 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 And you see, for instance, also in, in Leiden. Um, there is a project that started uh, perhaps 10 years ago, the single, where it was a bottom-up initiative in order to have a, that, that, um, a, a park around the single, parts that were already green, parts of the single were uh, a missing link. Mm -hmm. And it was a proposition, a bottom-up proposition to the municipality, very well set up. At the end, the municipality also invest in, uh, um, in, in having a good designer for that. But it it was not possible with the collaboration of the, the people mm. living around the area, and that also collaborate in mm. making the area green and maintenance. So you have different ways of set up a collaboration. Eh? So this is was very much bottom up with a very good uh, story to the municipality that decides to to collaborate with this project. Uh, sometimes you have informal, I, I know informal collaboration uh, between, for instance, the city of Santos on the coast of Sao Paulo and Rotterdam that I set up. Mm -hmm. The municipalities were working together, but not with all the paperwork, but, but very important to, to exchange knowledge. Yeah. Uh, and um, at that time, I set up a, 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 a collaboration in the sense that both was a win win situation. Mm -hmm. uh, how we can we learn to each other? But it was a very informal yeah. situation. Yeah. Not everything has to be regulated Formalized. with formers and yeah. stamps yeah. and, uh, and, uh, agreements, and as yeah. agreements. As as long as we don't need much, very much money, then then it's something that you have to organize yeah. in a better way. Yeah. Nice, thank you. We almost came to an end of this uh, discussion already. But before we uh, close this uh, this session, I would like to ask you. Um, well, we talked a lot about things that uh, we can do. Do you want to make a last, I don't know, call, call to action or uh, share some something that hasn't been said already about really working together uh, between cities? Whoever. Now, the, the, my advice and my call actually will be be curious about each other and um, break through the silos uh, yeah. in order to work more interdisciplinary and, yeah. and, and be uh, harm in the sense that, uh, well, I always say I don't know anything, but I know that a lot of people know what I don't know and, and yeah. vice versa. So be cu curious and uh, break through the silos yeah. in order to implement the solutions. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I think that I, I'm a fan of, of multidisciplinary work, interdisciplinary work, and I think that to go to keep the pace of developments mm -hmm. of how the world is evolving and the, and the urgencies that we are, we have to get rid of our clothes of, yeah. of disciplines and just embrace yeah. almost the unknown and, and the, uh, uh, the risk. Look a bit further. Look further. Then, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, let's do that. I would say, I would say. Thank you very much, Paula Harding, Victor Munoz Sanz. Um, thank you also for watching, of course, uh, and joining us via the uh, chat and the polls. 
Um, it was a very nice uh, conversation, I would say, and let's see what it will bring also for the Floriade. Um, as said last time, uh, also this session will, can be watched uh, online on the, via the website of Vereniging Delta Metropole. Um, all of these sessions will be um, um, well uh, uh, combined in, in some kind of chronicles or essays by Sonne van den Bremel, which be, will be handed out during the Floriade. And the next dialogue, the next session, the third dialogue, will take place on the 23rd of September in the afternoon from 3 o'clock. And that will be uh, about food systems in and around the cities, and that will be in Dutch. Thank you again for watching. Thank you again for uh, you. sharing you. your knowledge here, sitting on this table. And um, well, good luck with all the projects and, uh, and uh, international, national collaborations. Thank you. See you next time.